Ugly Women Self with CJ. I'm your host, CJ, and I have created this YouTube site as a place for you as the healthcare consumer to come to get reliable, non-biased, easy to understand information about women's health. In no way is this video meant to replace a visit with your provider, rather to provide a baseline of information so that when you do meet with your provider, perhaps you can have the questions ready that will best uh, address your own personal health care needs. Today we're going to focus on polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. So what is polycystic ovarian syndrome? To make it simple, poly is the Latin word for many. Cystic, cysts, ovarian in the ovaries, and syndrome. Anytime you hear the word syndrome, you have to understand it, it really encompasses a multi-system involvement. And PCOS does just that. It affects a number of different systems of your body. Um, demographically, um, it's estimated anywhere between, it, it depends on what study you read, 5 to 10, 5 to 15 percent of the population has polycystic ovarian syndrome. There is definitely a genetic component. We're finding that more women that are being diagnosed with PCOS, their mothers or their sisters also have PCOS. Um, one of the other big factors that is playing a big role in the development of PCOS is obesity. Um, women who carry extra weight, whether they are overweight or obese, are at greater risk to develop polycystic ovarian syndrome. So what are some of the symptoms that you might have? Irregular, infrequent menstrual cycles. Hair in places that girls don't typically have hair. We see hair on the chin, we see hair on the chest on the abdomen, places that girls don't usually have hair. Acne, facial acne, acne on your chest, on your back that will not resolve after adolescence, will go into adulthood, and it's often really, really hard to get rid of. Um, obesity, like I said, this is very common with PCOS. It's estimated anywhere from 40 to 80% of women with PCOS are obese. Now, you don't have to be obese to have PCOS, but it is definitely one of, the, one of the factors that plays into that. Some women will have thinning hair where they'll, they'll actually notice that their hair is starting, their hair is starting to fall out in almost a male pattern baldness um, pattern. Um, some women will be, have problems with infertility. A lot of times they come to the doctor when they haven't been able to get pregnant enough and we find out that they have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So how do we diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome? The generalized accepted um, list of symptoms is, is what's called the Rotterdam criteria. The Rotterdam criteria, you have to meet two out of the three. Um, the first one is irregular infrequent menstrual cycle. So normally, when a woman has normal, normal ovaries, um, every month under the influence of her different hormones, um, her ovary creates a dominant follicle. That follicle will release an egg, and then in, if that egg isn't fertilized within 14 days, the progesterone level falls off, and that's what brings on her menstrual cycle. Shameless moment of self-promotion. If you want to go back and read my period, the blessing and a curse, I go into that in much greater detail. Women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, their follicles never reach maturity, and so they don't ovulate, and since they don't ovulate, they don't menstruate on a monthly basis. Those um, little follicles will start to collect in the ovaries and um, creating, again, many cysts in the ovaries, which will throw off hormonal levels. Um, some of these women will have a, a, the second criteria is physical manifestations. Because of the hormone changes, they will have um, higher levels of testosterone. Again, you may see acne, you may see unwanted hair growth. Um, the third criteria is multiple peripheral follicles on the ovaries. What does that mean? Um, so these are the um, ovaries, this is the uterus. Um, because these women are not ovulating, and remember I said these little cysts are getting backed up, you will see what almost looks like, they call it a string of pearls going around um, in the ovaries. Now, that is done, those ovaries are looked at um, via ultrasound. You do not have to have cysts on your ovaries to have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And the flip side of that is not everybody with cysts on their ovaries has polycystic ovarian syndrome. 
but it, it, if you have the other symptoms, again, irregular menstrual cycles, um, the uh, physical manifestations, and you have the multiple peripheral follicles, you can, that you pretty much test in for, the, for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So when you come to see your provider and you are having these symptoms, whether it's unwanted hair growth, irregular menstrual cycles, um, they are going to want to do some lab work. There's a bunch of different systems that, that uh, regulate the menstrual cycle. You've got your pituitary glands. You've got your adrenal glands. Those are two little glands that are at the very top of your kidneys that are responsible for a lot of your sex hormones, testosterone, those kind of things. Um, you have your thyroid, and then you also have your ovaries, of course. Um, so when you go to the doctor, they're going to do some, they're going to do some lab work. We want to check on those adrenal glands. We want to check on your pituitary gland. We want to check on your thyroid. And of course, we want to uh, rule out the possibility of pregnancy if you're going a long period of time without, um, without menstrual cycles. Your provider may or may not order an ultrasound. It depends on your individual case. Um, they probably will want to do a physical exam. They will want to look for um, unwanted hair growth or, or acne. Um, if you are due for a pap smear, they may want to do a pap smear just to make sure that your irregular bleeding isn't related to um, some kind of an infection um, or cervical cancer. So you've gone to your provider. They have done the lab work. They've ruled out any other cause of irregular bleeding. Um, and now they are going, so you have been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So what are you going to do? The first, and, the first and foremost, most important thing is weight management. Women with polycystic ovarian syndrome are at much greater risk to develop um, diabetes or prediabetes. Um, because of the, they have what's called insulin resistance. Remember, it's multi-system involvement, so they have insulin resistance. Um, they're going to want to make sure that you menstruate on a regular basis. Remember, if you're not menstruating, if you go back to a previous video that I did about my aunt flow didn't show, we talk about uh, menstruation, um, the overdevelopment of the inside of the uterus, and this is called endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial hyperplasia, especially in the presence of women who are obese, um, patients who are over the age of 35, um, if you have a, a risk for um, endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial hyperplasia over time can turn into cervical or endometrial cancer. So it's really important um, that you menstruate on a monthly basis, um, whether that's with birth control pills or with doing what's called a withdrawal bleed where you just take Provera. Um, depends on your fertility plans. If you are somebody who wants to get pregnant, then they will look at more doing the Provera withdrawal bleeds if you are somebody who prefers to avoid pregnancy. Um, the birth control pills can not only protect you from pregnancy as well as protect your uterine lining, um, but some birth control pills can also help uh, stop unwanted hair growth. It's not going to get rid of the hair that you have developed, but it can stop the progression of the unwanted hair. Um, there are some medications that you can get also uh, if you are pre-diabetic, your provider may want to start you on something to help mon uh, manage your glucose levels. Um, and if you ha really have a lot of unwanted hair growth, there are some what are called anti-androgen medications that your provider can prescribe that can help with that. Is there a cure? No, really there is not a cure to PCOS, but it is something that you can uh, definitely learn to live with and manage. So if you are, if you have PCOS and you are trying to get pregnant, um, please understand that PCOS definitely will decrease your ability to get pregnant, but it doesn't eliminate it altogether. People can get pregnant because every now and then one of those little, one of those little, um, the, it, the ovaries will ovulate and you can get a fertilized egg and that can lead to a, to a pregnancy. Um, if you are not able to get pregnant after 6 to 12 months, usually you'll want to see some kind of either an OBGYN or a reproductive endocrinologist and talk about different ways to stimulate ovulation and to try to see that and see. If you have a history of PCOS and you are pregnant, Please understand that you are at greater risk for developing gestational diabetes, a diabetes that is specific to pregnancy. So they will want to do an early glucose tolerance test at the, at the beginning of your pregnancy. You're also at risk to develop high blood pressure. So they may put you on a low-dose aspirin 
sometime right around 12 weeks, uh, they may want to get a little bit of extra lab work just to what's called baseline lab. Um, if you have had a baby and it is you are now at your postpartum visit and you have a history of PCOS, you um, will want to talk about birth control. Even though it was very hard for you to get pregnant the first time around, I always tell my patients that uh, having a baby is like doing a major reboot on the system. You will return to fertility um, pretty quickly. And um, I have had patients who have shown up at their six-week postpartum visit pregnant again because they didn't think they could get pregnant. Um, so that's basically polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you would like to hear about anything in particular, if you have questions about what we've talked about today, please reach out into the comments section. I will put my email address there for you. If you have found this information to be at all um, helpful, please feel free to subscribe, like, share, whatever you feel most compelled to do. That's all I have for today. This is CJ at your service.